Good Friday morning. <laughs> St. Luke is going bananas here. He's going strong, okay? <laughs> but this is a good one. This is a good reading. It's also, it's a great, it's prudence. It's a great reading about prudence. I'll read it to you. Jesus told his disciples a parable. Consider the fig tree and all the other trees. When their buds burst open, you see for yourselves and know the summer is now near. In the same way, when you see these things happening, namely these apocalyptic moments, then know that the kingdom of God is near. That's just what I've been saying, see? Amen, I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. The eternity, you see? Time passes, but not eternity. The of God's word, Christ, you see? But then that need where he says... You know, that's a great. Consider the fig tree and all the trees. When their buds burst open, you see for yourself and know that summer is now near. See? See? The seasons, well, it's an example of the seasons. In other words, pay attention. Pay attention. Know that the kingdom of God is at hand. So I don't know anything about fig trees, but I know an awful lot about life. And you see, be aware of the grace moment. Don't be foolish. This is, the, this is a grace moment. See it and grasp it, you see? And what he said, and when he used the example of this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place, our lives are inst our lives are moments, are moment after moment after moment of these apocalyptic happenings. But we have to, in a sense, be aware. Well, not in a sense, we have to be, in a sense, open to the grace of the moment open to it, open to the grace that may be before us. It can be anything and everything. You know it and I know it, it can be whatever. You know, it could be, I, I keep thinking about family life because it's got to be all the time that there is that grace moment. And it also mine, I mean, do I pay attention to my students in class? More than did they get the material, all right? Half the time, they're not paying any attention to me anyway. They got their computers open, and they're, they're looking at their, they're doing their own stuff, whatever. But sometimes there's a grace moment there where somebody, a kid will say something, and it's not about the material, but it's a revelatory moment, something in their life. And it's at that moment, you have to see and hear the reality of what's there and not simply pass over it. That happens a fair amount in the university level. I'm sure on all levels, but on the university level, where kids are making major decisions about what their lives, who they're with, this, their story, they tell their story. And there is a moment. Do you see the moment? Do you see them? One of the most, and I know I've said this publicly, so it's not, I'm not discerning anything, but you see, you see st and reading student papers very often, you see and hear their struggle with life, especially in the kind of courses I teach, philosophy, religion, and ethics, because you're dealing with life issues. And in the religion class, the center of the, the course is called Does God Exist? Well, you see kids who grew up in the faith, and they deny it. And some of them can walk away without blinking an eye, but in many cases, you see they're struggling with their denial. They're struggling with, they're not comfortable within themselves, but they're torn by their doubts. You gotta hear that. And sometimes it's written, sometimes, and sometimes it's not. And one of the most significant moments in my life, I have to say, when I, one of my students wrote such a powerful rejection of the faith, and she was a Catholic. And she was a theology major. And I, this was not the same as just another kid writing another thing. This was personal. And we became friends after that because I reached out. And she cried. From that moment on, thank you, Barbara Streisand. She touched me. Nothing is the same. You see? Yeah. I don't know why I'm telling you these stories, but I think <laughs> the analogy of the fig tree, we are, he said, the summer is at hand. The truth is the summer is every second. It's every moment. And it doesn't, 
You don't get a second chance. In so many instances of life, you don't get a second chance. Not because God withholds us, because life is uh, passing, and that opportunity may never come again. It's a flick, a moment, a moment of grace on both people's part, on life circumstances, and a chance to see, a chance, and you fail to see, or you're too busy to see, or you're too harsh, and and at that moment you present a barrier to intimacy person becomes afraid to be hurt and hence will not open up their heart to you. Okay. Interesting, isn't it? I think in those terms a lot after saying, see, we're, we're, Luke is looking at the end of the world. I'm looking at life. And I'm saying the end time is right now. It's right now. Any moment and every moment in which we live is the, is the moment of grace. And therefore it's the end time when our Sensitivities to the moment, our sensitivities to grace define us. They define us. Do we respond to the grace or do we not? Do we embrace the moment of God's love in the persons and events in our lives? Or are we indifferent to them, passively indifferent, or do we reject them? Okay. If I'm going all week long about this thing, it's because it's so real to me. I don't want to be, go back to the 50s and the, when we were thinking the end of the world was coming in the 60s. You could almost say it did. The 60s was one, one, one crazy-ass uh, the decade. But I, I remember that kind of terrifying scenario. The reality is it was all hyper. What was really true was the moment of the human soul. The human soul. Culturally, yeah, there was a time of crisis, and we're still going through it. And in that sense, Christianity is at stake, okay, in the West. They said that a couple of days ago. Yeah. But I look at it, okay, okay, maybe so. Yeah, and I actually think so. But the kicker is, in our own personal lives, we live in the apocalyptic moment. We live in the moment of grace. By how we live and who we live with, and where does our life take us? Where does the narrative take us, our life narrative take us, and how do we choose it? Put it another way, how do we write the script that is the story of our lives? How do we write it? And with whom do we write it? Isn't that neat? Yeah. Grant you, the, you could describe the 20th century and the 21st as apocalyptic in terms of the faith, the faith in the, in the European and American community. Yes, the culture. I'm more inclined to, and, and I believe that actually very strongly. I think we're in a moment where we choose what kind of a culture we will be and whether we'll survive as a civilization as such. But the reality is when I look and see these texts, I think of the journey of the soul. Do we, do we embrace Christ in the moment, the moment of our lives, when we have a graced moment, the apocalyptic moment, when we can choose Christ or reject him? in the eyes of our beloved, the people of our lives, in the events of our lives, in the moments in which we breathe and live. Do we embrace Christ or do we ignore him or do we reject him? How do we write our story? 